new book called By Your Side. And it talks about their extraordinary 27 years together. It's so good to see you, Scott. You too, Lorraine. She told you when you wrote about her, you had to be honest and you really have been. You really have been, which yeah. is... I, I made doing? a promise. I made a promise to her. Because I, I once asked Barbara and I said, why did you feel you had to be so honest? in your interviews mm -hmm. and the, the books that you did. I said, you were so candid. People in your position just wouldn't have said the things you said. And she went, I'll tell you why, darling. She said, because I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror. Uh -huh. I have to own myself. She said, now some people are like me and some people won't, but as long as I've been true to myself, she said, and I'll tell you something, they're gonna ask you to do a book about us when I'm gone. <laughs> she said, and I so want you to knew. do it. She knew it, she predicted it. She said, I want you to do it. She said, but promise me, Scott, you will be honest. And you have been. What shines through, though, mm. even when times are tough and you had some tough times, yeah. the love you had, the genuine love you mm. had for each other, and you know, and you, you talk about it in the book, and it's absolutely heartbreaking, the amount of stick that you got because she was older than you. Yeah. And if she was like, oh, what's he after? You know, there's oh, all of that that you had to put up with. It's absolutely. been awful. I mean, at, at first, you know, a lot of people called me a gold digger. And what they didn't know behind the scenes was Barbara had a million pound debt. She did, not, I, not for her own fault, mind for, you. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was saying to her, Look, don't worry, you'll come and live in my flat in East yeah. Finchley. Yeah. And yet people were saying, oh, he's, a guy, he's after her money. I know. So it, it was kind of quite hard to take, but of course there was nothing I could say no, at but, that time. No, but people were cruel. They were, they they were, were cruel, some, they called you people. a toy boy and a gold digger yeah. and all of these things, and then you were right there throughout when it when things got bad yeah. you did leave though didn't you at one point i did absolutely i mean i was kind of full and wrecked with insecurities mm -hmm. and that's not barbara's fault i mean i'd always been like that i used to cover that myself through yeah. alcohol and yep. and drugs self-medicating yeah absolutely yep. it kind of used to bolster me and make me feel sure. good um and i suddenly got to a stage where i stopped drinking at this point and i thought I know what's wrong, it's this relationship, it's all this public eye thing, I need to leave. And it was ridiculous, you know, we'd been together a good few years and I was walking out the door literally sobbing. She was sobbing, why are you going? I'm saying in my head, why am I going? Yeah. We were apart for about six or eight months, uh, but the first person I phoned when I went to America, where I went to hide, was Barbara. Yeah. But I also started drinking again at that point. Right. But I came back, we got back together, we got married, um, all it is with me, I'm someone who can't drink. Right. I mean, God willing, a day at a time, I'll be 21 years sober oh, and clean. Oh, congratulations. Thank That's you. Amazing. In a, That's January incredible. the 2nd. Um, and then life turned and we got married and, and things, you know, we, we went through a lovely period. That was the thing, we always had fun. You laughed a lot. Always. <laughs> We chatted. We never stopped talking for 27 years. <laughs> it, was, it was absolutely fantastic. Which is great. She was your soulmate. Yeah. She great. really was. Yeah. And do you know the thing that I always say about, about the two of us? People say, oh, how, you know, how, how did you do that? How did you stay together for so long? And I said, because we liked each other. Right, because you can love somebody and not like them. You can always Sometimes. say, yeah. we always say yeah. I love you to people, yeah. but actually to like them yeah. and want to spend time with them and like the person that they are. Mm. That's a big thing. I think it's no its no coincidence that after COVID, True. a lot of people separated. They did. Because they had to be together. Absolutely. So. Absolutely, you're right. But it was difficult for you because I, I know in the book you say you called yourself the shoulder because <laughs> they kept cutting you out of the picture anytime there was a photograph of the two of you. And, and that, but that's quite hard because you, you know, at the time when you met Barbara, you were an aspiring actor and mm. you were, you know, you were sort of wanting to make your way in the world. And yeah. it's difficult when you're the plus one. It's Absol hard. Absolutely. And, and, and yeah. people don't kind of, a lot of the time people don't mean to be rude, but what they do is they, they, kind of speak across you. It's as if you're invisible and, the, yes. and the, you're not there. Yes. And uh, I always I always knew Barbara was the star. I never tried to push myself out the front. I was quite happy to walk one step behind Bar, give, give people their time with sure. her. You know, and people used to react in so many different ways when they saw her. A lot of people would become emotional when they saw Barbara. And I think that was because she'd been around for so long, they all remembered the Carry On films. It reminded them of their childhood yes. and their families and their mm -hmm. parents. And often I'd see people start crying and, and she'd be oh, holding wow. their hand and say, oh, it's all right, darling. She'd always say they're happy tears. She was amazing with the public. Mm. You know, she really was. I mean, yeah. it must have taken you ages to do anything. Everywhere. I mean, you know, if you were going out or if you were even sitting having dinner or yeah. even just walking down the street, it would have taken you, because everybody oh. wants to come up and have their time yeah, with her. Yeah, definitely. And when we left a function, you know, I'd, I'd say 40 minutes before, we should start leaving now. 
because I knew there's no one that she would leave out. She would just stop no, 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 no. everyone. And oh. The thing that she always used to say um, about, like, you know, when people came up and asked for an autograph or a picture, but I always used to say, listen, love, it takes a lot of courage to come up to someone well-known right. and, and ask for oh. an autograph. They don't know how you're going to react. Yeah. You, you might be really nice or you might say, I'm sorry, I'm busy. But she was always yeah, she lovely, liked, absolutely she lovely. Loved people. You talk um, towards the end of the book, obviously, mm. about her Alzheimer's of and course. about her dementia. Yeah. And you again, you don't spare yourself and you don't spare her. It was really tough. I had no idea how hard it was for you, for her and for everyone who loved her. Yeah, it, it, it's the cruelest of diseases. It's horrible. It, it, it really is the cruelest of diseases. And you are very powerless to stop it doing what it's doing to the yeah. person you love. So all you can really do, you can be there, you learn as you go along as a carer, because none of us are really equipped. We're, no. I wasn't qualified. No, of course not. And it changes the whole time. So you're reacting the whole time mm. to these new challenges. And of course, as it progresses and things do get more difficult and there's less recognition, with her and I, and she'd look at her, our photos and then she'd look back at me and she'd say, how long have you lived here? And I'd oh, most likely been there over, you know, 25 years yeah. or something. And I'd say, oh, well, you and I have been in Asia. And she'd say, that's our wedding picture. And occasionally she'd go, are we married? I'd go, yeah, she went, yes. Oh, <laughs> so, oh that's... Oh, it was very sweet. It was very sweet, lovely, but heartbreaking. But it's, but yeah, heartbreaking. it's bittersweet, isn't it? Because it's, it's, it's really hard. And then when she Absolutely. doesn't know you, and that's yeah. so, so difficult, yeah. so difficult. The legacy is remarkable because, I mean, there was the Barbara Windsor effect, wasn't there? Absolutely. So much money, um, you know, got donated to Alzheimer's. You did your marathons for goodness sake yes yeah incredible you and the eastenders gang as well absolutely which was, which was that was lovely. that was incredible but we want to keep up that momentum and i know um you talked to the last prime minister boris johnson about that is that still going to go ahead is that still going to happen i'm a little bit concerned about that lorraine in all honesty because um the it was an incredible honor that this first of all i'm an ambassador for alzheimer's research yes. uk yeah. And they had this um, conception that if we have a task force like we had for COVID, then we can just focus on dementia. We need a cure. There's a million right. people living with it at the moment. And when I went to see the, uh, the, the last prime minister in August, just before he left, he said, look, I've listened about this task mm. force. We did a big conference with Dame Kate Bingham, mm -hmm. who headed up the COVID. Yeah. Um, he said, and I've set aside 95 million pounds. And with your blessing, we'd like to call it the Dame Barbara Windsor Dementia Mission. Wow. And I just went, well, I said she would just be looking That's down. That's amazing. Thrilled. However. But, yes. The interviews to put people in place for this were supposed to take place two weeks ago. They were cancelled at the last minute. Right. And told that there's um, issues with the budget sign-off for the Dementia Task Force. Now... I understand that we are in a very bad place as far as economy and savings and cuts. Dementia cannot be touched. This is about trialling new drugs. Now, if we start that tomorrow, it's going to be two or three years yeah. before we can get them actually active into the system. If you delay this now, again, after all these years, mm. we're going to be talking about another five or six years before this can happen. So please, Prime Minister, if you listen to things like this, do not touch that money. Yeah. Do not hold this. Do not delay this. Yeah. That's the only thing that gets me passionate or political. No, you're right. I mean, they're saying, the through. government have said to us this morning that they remain strongly committed to supporting research into dementia, mm. but they haven't gone into any more specifics about this. You're not going to let it rest. Oh, I really I know, I you, really I know won't. you aren't. I know you aren't. <laughs> but the book, Scott, it's, it's beautifully written. Thank you. Um, it's. it's happy it's sad mm. and it's a real insight into the love that you had for one another what a grafter she was what an oh. amazing lady she's fantastic she absolutely was, she fantastic. Was unbelievable. and it's out right now it's um, by your side there is my life loving barbara windsor and it's out right now we can highly recommend that love that picture on the front as well she's lovely thank you scott Take so care. good to talk to you thank you